Hey everybody, it's your girl Claudia Jordan and welcome to Cocktails with the Queens. I am back with my girls. What's up, Vivica A. Fox? How you doing? Hey, hey Claudia. Hey, pretty lady. Okay. Also, we've got, of course, the beautiful Lisa Ray. What's up, girl? Hi there, my queen sis friends. <laughs> and last but certainly not least, we have the amazing Selena Johnson. What's up, girl? Hi, everybody. Everyone looks so amazing tonight. Hey, oh, I didn't put an ad in front of Vivica Fox's name. The amazing, the incomparable. <laughs> Fox. I don't want to leave nobody out now. <laughs> you know what, Claudia? I will take all of those. I really would. <laughs> all of those, all those adjectives. Yeah. Is that what you call those? <laughs> Well, tonight, as usual, we're dishing about everything that's trending in the news and on social media. And later on the show, we're talking about the importance of owning the room with the mother of Black Hollywood, Jennifer Lewis. You don't want to miss this interview, so stick around for that. Ladies, what y'all sipping on tonight? Y'all drinking? Well, you know, we are definitely fabulous creatures of habit. Every Monday, that's why we love getting together. So I'm sticking with what works for me, Pinot Noir. Okay, okay. Lisa Ray, what you got going on over there? Oh, you know, I'm going to always slide over, slide in, and slide up to my lips, the tea. <laughs> I know where she's going with that. With that. Okay. I had, to, I had to do so much movement to get to it. Wasn't it, Claudia? I had, to, I had to have so much movement to get to it. So I, I had left out of frame. So it was like, give them a reason why you did that. And then slide <laughs> back on up in here and then get <laughs> this, you know? Selena, what you got over there, girl? Um, I just have some generic Pepsi. I mean, really? <laughs> old Why school be Pepsi. I mean, it's old school Pepsi. I'm in my hotel room and I thought I was going to be turning up in my little mini bar and it was like beer or Pepsi and seven up. So, uh, well, you know what? You can, at least there was something there. Cause how right. many times do y'all go to a hotel room now? And you're like, Oh, let me get a water. Let me get a little, Oh, ain't nothing in there. Right. right. Okay. Man, no, what it is is that when you grab some water and it's ten dollars a bottle. <laughs> That's That's true. Agreed. Agreed. That's all the food. I know <laughs> that almost almost makes you think about. Let me try this faucet water. Okay. okay. <laughs> <laughs> I was water ten dollars. <laughs> what the hell is water ten dollars? And half the time they be filling the real tea is they be filling those plastic bottles up with the tap water anyways and calling okay. it. Bring and there you have don't, it. Don't tell, that's why I stop at the store, especially when I'm in New York. I stop at a good old bodega and get my own water and bring it <laughs> with go me. Go down to the store and get water. Let me try it. All right, ladies, we got a lot of stuff to talk about tonight before Ms. Lewis uh, joins us. So let's get into this Michael Blackson story. Now, he responded to Backlash, joking about wanting to hook up with Brittany Griner once she's released from jail. The comedian wrote... When Brittany Griner gets out, I want to be the first one to give her some bleep. And by bleep, he said, deek. Okay. Now, after receiving backlash, uh, Michael Blackson tweeted, I don't care how soft you want comedians to be. I'm not changing for no one. I make fun of any and everyone. I know this can never happen to me, but I need you to lighten up, motherfuckers. <laughs> you think Michael Blackson was out of line for the joke, or is it just a comedian? Comedian. Comedian? Comedianian. All right, Lee. Safe to say that everybody know that she don't want no D. <laughs> She's married, you know what I mean, and happily, supportively married. So it had to have been a joke, in his good old fashioned way of how he does and how comedians have always been able to get away with saying stuff. It is just us that can't get away with saying anything. <laughs> right. Okay. All right, Selena. What you think? I am half Lisa Ray and half the other side. I do feel like comedians should have freedom to be able to say what they want to say. And we should be able to take a joke from time to time. But I do feel like in this instance, he needed to read the room. This is a serious situation. Um, and I'm sure her wife didn't think that was funny. And I'm sure people who are trying, you know, rooting and praying for her to get out of jail um, over there in Russia, which is an absolute horrendous situation. I'm sure they didn't think it's funny. So I think sometimes comedians need to read the room. Uh, maybe had he told this joke when she was out already and said, I wish I would have been the first one, to, you know, then maybe it's funny, but she's still there. And we don't really know the, what is going to be the, the end all yet. So mm -hmm. I don't know. That one is a little, gotcha. I don't okay. know. And I like, I like him a lot. So Vivica, what'd you think? Too soon too soon, too wrong. 
I concur with the other ladies, um, especially Selena, uh, when she said, read the room too soon, too soon, way too soon, as a matter of fact. And this is really a serious matter. Tell your jokes, but that was a little tasteless. Got it. Got it. I, okay, ladies, great points made. Okay, moving on. Twitter is outraged after a man posted a wedding photo of his wife with the caption, met on hinge. The rest is history. No pressure to take her on any fancy dates or expensive restaurants. Just good old conversations in alignment with our goals. Now, one person retweet, uh, replied to the post and wrote, God forbid a man post me online and tell the world he got me at a discount. Another person wrote, <laughs> Why would he purposely do the bare minimum? Why would he not want to do his best? Why should she accept it? Ladies, I want to get your thoughts on the story. And how would you react if someone posted that about you or one of your girlfriends? Vivica, let's start with you. Do we know the wife's name? I don't. Don't. That's okay. Girl, you in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> He's broke ass. <laughs> Ain't going to do nothing but post pictures and let everybody know. As Claudia said, he got you at a discount and he ain't doing much more. So, girl, you in trouble. Well said. You know it's what? I'd like to, to add a little bit to that because I think that probably and perhaps we're not looking into it a little deeper, which is I think that's what he was saying. Uh, he was saying that besides all of that or any of that, we had a deeper connection of me really getting to know her on a foundation of just talking and really thinking about what is it that you want out of your life? These are the things that I want. Can we build those things together? Can we grow together to get all the things that we want with one last name? Okay. All right. Good point. <laughs> Bullshit. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, uh, again. <laughs> I, uh, I'm going to have to go with Lisa Ray on this one um, because only because you know how we're in such a um, social media world. I'm going to go out on a limb here and say he's trying to play off that one uh, situation that went viral where the guy was just calling out all the stuff that he bought. He bought this. He bought that. And this is how she acted. I'm thinking when I read that, I thought maybe he was trying to say, see, it wasn't even about all that. I didn't have to do this. We didn't have to go that. And he didn't say I didn't have to buy her. He just said no fancy this, no fancy that connection between two human beings and then they got married. So I think he was trying to play off of that whole situation that went viral that was a train wreck. I'm gonna say now that he's married to her and I'm, and even before that, we don't know if he's already taken her nice places and done nice things for her. I'm, I'm not gonna, I don't wanna assume that he hasn't done that. I think he was like Lisa Ray said, I think he was just really trying to say there was a bigger, deeper connection. He was trying to play out that land situation. Um, all have made great points. I'm going to say this. I think um, I get that he's trying to say simplicity. It's really not about the, the bells and whistles about our love. But to Vivica's point, when you put it on social media, you got to know it's going to be out there to be criticized. And it does sound like, hey, I would have to do SHIT to get this one. She was easy breezy. I didn't have to do nothing. He probably didn't mean that because if he married her, I'm sure he loves her. But it comes off that way because of how you said it. And, you know, if you put something on social media, every little thing going to be read into. We're going to break it down, dissect it and make it go viral. And so we can talk about it on our shows. But a and lot that, of people that's don't that's 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 Can I just make one more little point? People, before you push send, proofread it. Just read it one more time. That's what I was gonna say. I, I done wrote whole dictionaries of stuff. I wanted to post it back. Yes, you, you have, girl. <laughs> no, I had to learn not to do that. So just proofread it before you hit send. That's all. I, I, I was gonna say that, Vivica, just really quickly. He would have been good if he would have just been like he would have gave a lot of the pe a lot of the world's hope if he would have just said met on hinge and now look we married like that would have been cute you didn't have to give all that extra tea mm -hmm. i think i think you right on that bit. but, but he could have been talking to the he could have been talking directly to the girls that want to just and only secure the bag which is it don't take all of that because if i get a here i got a here and what we had to do is just do right here you hear me so no, i mean agreed but you know you get one Wedding day. Hey, Lisa Ray, will that work with you? Hell to the no. 
Right. Oh, yes. <laughs> oh, now, you talk about me. You want to talk about me. <laughs> so, right. All right. Hail to the no. <laughs> okay. Hail sure. to the no. <laughs> okay. In I Whitney's said, voice. I said, okay. I mean, Lisa Ray was like, damn, a conversation. Where the boat at? Okay. <laughs> the yacht. So boat. The not yacht. Right. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Get it right, Claudia. Not a vote. <laughs> I know my girl. The people on a canoe. Right. <laughs> All right, y'all. Uh, this, video, this video is making the rounds on social media of a Black woman who says she's going to start dating outside of her race. Take a look. But as a dark skinned Black woman, the most hate I get is from my own men. And me restricting myself to only dating Black men is giving me little to no options. Is that how she looked for real? Because it was a little Barbie. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. So she's a model. So I, I I went on her page. I made a comment and she actually wrote me back. And I want to get y'all's perspective on this. Selena, let's start with you. What are your thoughts on her perspective? Now, I'm going to just full transparency before we go down the wrong rabbit hole. The video, she doesn't say she's done with black men. She yeah. still wants to date a black man. She says she has to open her options to also include non-black men. Yeah. And still, you know, so she's not saying... She's not doing a Stacey Dash on us where it's like, I don't want to date black men. She's doing a, I'm opening up so I can have options. Selena, what do you think about that? Um, yeah, and, and she's pro-black and for the cause, Black Lives Matters, all of that. What was the most jarring thing that stood out in her, um, in her rant was that she said the, the, the men that hate her the most, that treat her the worst, are black men. And mm -hmm. that she said um, she doesn't have time for them. It's not fair for her to wait for them to heal. My God, that hit me because I was just like, you know what? It is unfair to expect black women to sit around and wait, wait for black men to heal from all the things that they've gone through because of the color of their skin, because of what they've had to deal with in America. But on the other hand, black men get to date all around their race. All around their race, and they don't care. It's so many beige babies in this world, honey, that it don't make no sense. So my thing is, I I think it was great that she said that. I think, and I really think it's about being happy. You know, it is. in terms of relationships, it really should be about being happy. It really should. Yeah. It shouldn't really be about. Well, I want to date. Yeah, if you prefer this is your preference, you always want to go with your preference first. But if that's not working, you should not sit and just sit around and wait just because your preference, you know what I'm saying, is not coming through. You should go where you're celebrated, right. not tolerated. All right. I'm Amen. Difficult. What okay. do you think about the story? Two can play that game. Like okay. you said, if the brothers is doing it, so can we. I personally don't discriminate. You know what I mean? <laughs> if you come over and I'm like, well, hey there. <laughs> you know what I mean? I, I don't discriminate. I don't. Because I see beauty and handsome in all colors. You know what I mean? That so I, I'm with it when she writes. So girl, do you. If he come up, he's Italian, French, uh, 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 Asian, whatever it is. If he's nice to you, have a good time. Okay. Yeah. Lisa Ray? I concur. Nothing else said. Um, I have a friend uh, that's a beautiful chocolate girl in, in Miami. She has one of the best bodies I've ever seen in my life. 100% mm. natural. She's a fitness girl. This girl's skin is chocolate. Shout out to my girl, Dee Dee. She's a teacher. She's smart. She's educated. Every time I go to Miami, I'm like, are you dating anyone? She's like, girl, these guys would not holler at me. They just want the Latina girls and the white girls. She's like, they never wow. hit on me. I'm, she said, I'm everybody's homegirl. I'm everybody's homegirl. And there's no excuse this woman should not have men knocking down her door trying to get at her. And she says all the time, they are not rocking with the dark skin down here, down in Miami. And mm -hmm. both these women are drop dead gorgeous. I made a comment on, on one of the posts. It was on Dr. Boyce Watkins page about this young lady. I said, I got to say, I got to have your back on this. I know a girl that's going through similar situations like you and you're not getting hit on like, like, you know, these men, they're saying they don't want nothing darker than them. They still doing, doing that stupid paper brown bag test, brown paper bag test. There's a lot of men in our community that have issues with this, that don't want to date someone that's as dark as them or darker. And they have real issues with it. And they do need healing. And Selena, you are absolutely right. Why should we have to wait for you to go get healing and go get fixed? Or why do we, do we have to be the ones that fix you? She okay. is 
she, she a beautiful woman. And, and, the, and when men do it, we don't say anything. When black women do it, for some reason, they want to make us be uh, sellouts and bed wenches and all kind of nonsense. A lot of times black women are crossing over out of necessity because y'all ain't hollering at her. Yeah. Y'all ain't hollering at she Have has seen that actress that that went to the Oscars and her man is white and she walks yes. she walks so the way he looks at her yes look at her baby oh Serena they, Williams she, honey yep. Serena, Serena Williams. Williams too yes Serena my Williams man, uh, uh, oh my God he adores her look how happy they uh, look together I just want people and to be open a bunch of black men that was the fool and I was gonna say this. You know, my mom back in the day, she used to say, what's that saying? The sweeter the berry, the, the darker the berry, the, the, berry, the sweeter the juice. And I used to be like, oh, because I had not seen it. But now this day and age, it's impossible not to see it. Because when you see that skin color on a dark chocolate, anything, mm-hmm. and they smile and them teeth so white and the, and, the, and the eyes are so white and that skin so white, you can't do nothing but stare really because you like, Wow, because I don't know about y'all, but being light skinned, every pimple, every freckle, every vein, every thing show up just like that. <laughs> that chocolate up against that TV skin at nighttime, that ain't never looked so good. Look, we all just went to Jamaica and was like, oh, come on, come on, son. Okay, come on and kiss. Me. On and kiss so, me. I just want to caution folks that are criticizing this young lady. She's clearly pro black, she's not the type of woman that's selling out on her people. And she's explain. She's a 19 year old, extremely articulate woman. If you take the time to watch her whole video, mm-hmm. she's doing it because she feels like she doesn't have any other options. She prefers a black man. So y'all better get in her DMs. This woman is gorgeous and smart. All right, coming up, we are catching up with the mother of black Hollywood. Yes. Jennifer Lewis is joining us. Stay tuned. We'll be back with more right after this. Welcome back to Cocktails with the Queens. We are super excited about this guest because she is doing major things and we all love her and you will too. Tonight, we are talking about the importance of owning the room with the mother of Black Hollywood. Please welcome award-winning actress, Jennifer Lewis. Hey, Queen. Hello, Queens. Hello, hello, hello. I just love that you guys are so pretty and fabulous. Oh my God, look, we got to take lessons from you because you've been so fabulous for so long and such a diva and such a queen and such an inspiration till I don't get excited about much, but then again, everything, but this right here and you right there, (laughs) honey, hello, hello, and thank you. Okay. My pleasure. And, And Jennifer, we've been seeing you everywhere. You have been just, I mean, Besides your extremely long and amazing career, lately we've been seeing even more of you and we, we couldn't be happier. So we are so happy you made time for us because we are excited. Uh, we have so much to ask you about, but we want to start by celebrating your star on Hollywood's Walk of Fame. I got two questions. What was it like for you? Yeah. And damn it, how did you get your legs so high up with that kick? Okay. <laughs> okay. Listen, first of all, y'all need to read the first book, The Mother of Black Hollywood. Oh, yes. It will tell you, no, really, it would tell you that I was a can-can dancer when I was 19 years old. And a professional can-can dancer from Switzerland taught me how to get my leg that high up in the air. It's like a pendulum. You stand in a doorway and you start off slow. And before you know it, it's up there. But now the other thing you must understand is I've taken yoga all my life Mm -hmm. and Pilates for the last 30 years. So I read a book by Laurence Olivier, a great actor that I respected. And the one line that jumped out of me in his book was if you're going to go into show business, You've got to have a healthy body Mm -hmm. because of the demands that are put on us. You know, I can still cartwheel and, you know, I can still do the split. And I was captain of the cheerleading squad. So it's all of my experience. Uh Uh-huh, there it is. Discipline, you know, it's discipline that has gotten me where I am. Far from perfect, but I got the job done. Mm. And, and the moment on the Walk of Fame, getting that star, uh, please speak on that for us, because that was beautiful. All I can tell you is I wore that neon green, yellow, what the hell it is, whatever it is, because I wanted to look like a bird of paradise. Mm. Mm. Because 
that's what I felt like. I wow. felt like a, a bird of paradise in Borneo somewhere, leaping above the grass, saying, I'm here and I'm happy. You know, so few people are uh, conscious of incorporating color into their lives, you yeah. see. And a lot of people are very depressed and they wear these dark colors. No, bring your life alive. Hmm. Celebrate every day that you can. I tell people, you're not gonna get somewhere and be happy. You've got to be happy on your way to happy. You Woo! see. Come on, the words. Well, okay. I got some words for you. Listen, because this is why I'm too excited about this whole interview, because it's going to be so many nuggets <laughs> and messages that's going to go on the whole time. S speaking of which, you, even though you were getting your, your walk of your, your start and it's your day, you still found time to be conscious about talking about voting. We have a clip about it. We have a clip to show it. Let's, let's see the clip right now. Mm. Now, see, Jennifer, why was it so important? I mean, we know why it's important to vote, but why was it so important to use that moment of yours to express to younger people how important it is to get out of vote? First of all, show business is like brushing my teeth. Mm. I was born with a gift and charisma. And I went to college and I learned how to speak. That's why everybody loves my voice because I leave no consonants or vowels on the floor. Okay. I, don't like, I don't like people to say to me, what did you say? <laughs> Didn't you hit what you lit? <laughs> no, no. What was I, soft? Was it soft? But listen, I care. You see, I had a dream Ooh. and I have conquered that dream. I didn't need that star on a sidewalk to tell me I'm a star. Hello. Mm. I've been a star since I was five years old. Mm. When I sang my first solo in church and from the reaction of the congregation, I stood there with my thumb in my mouth thinking, oh, this is life, huh? And I never looked back. I have been entertaining people. It doesn't matter where I am, I'm gonna be entertaining. I remember hearing one of you say, I think it was you, Lisa Ray. Uh, she's got all this vibrato, but she, you got to love her because she comes from her heart. Bingo, you hear me? Yes. I come from the soul. I was made this way, y'all. I built this big, bold life that I love. And let me tell you about the measure of my success. It is not the money. Everybody knows I got more money than God. Don't ask me for none. <laughs> Isn't that a good line? Anyway, yeah, I'm rich. I don't know how much I've worked. That money don't mean nothing. This big house don't, well, I love this big house, but you got to understand in two seconds, a 9.2 could take it down. Let me tell you where the joy is. Let me tell you where the alignment is. It is in you. My success is measured by the smile on my face. Mm. Understand, is it broad today? Are you just smiling, Jenny, or are you laughing? Sometimes a smile means more than big laughter. If you find yourself smiling, that's the truth. Anybody can go <laughs> and don't leave. But see, <laughs> listen, I got to take a moment to break out some of these receipts of yours. Because like oh, you, you've been doing it for a while. You have appeared in over 400 television shows, 68 movies, and performed in four Broadway shows. You have the title of Mother of Black Hollywood. What does that mean to you? It means that I gave up some times 
but I didn't quit. Yes. You got to be in it to win it, baby. Yes. You can't sit down. I've told people not even me can stop me. Mm. Because the dream was so powerful. Y'all, my focus was narrow. I had to contain my bipolar disorder. Mm. I had to measure and look for the warning signs of diva. You see, I dismissed the diva. Of course, that bitch didn't go nowhere, but I tried. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I didn't, want to be, I didn't want to be difficult. As I told you in my speech, when I got my star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame, I didn't need to say in my speech, I earned this. <laughs> because everybody knows that. Mm. What was important for me to say is that it wasn't the work on camera and on stage. It was the work I did off stage yes, so that I could stay mentally stable to be in my skin in order to enjoy my life and the fruits of my labor. I travel all over the world, ladies. I just got back. <laughs> oh, it's all right. You got to understand, I'm a little poor girl from Kenlock, Missouri. And there I was standing in front of the Taj Mahal. There I was in a helicopter going through the Himalayan mountain range. Mm -hmm. There I was at the Grand Mosque in Abu Dhabi. And there I was in the hills of Moses in Petra, Jordan. Taking it in, I've taken a camel in the Great Pyramid of Giza, a camel in the Gobi Desert, hanging out with the nomads. I want to see the world. When I was in that little poor town, I knew there was more. And I went and got it. Amen. There are soldiers in me. I don't know where I got them from. I don't know what picks me up sometimes, but you better believe if I can't get out of the bed, I tug on Sojourner's skirt. I remember how fragile Mandela's shoulders are, and I remember I'm standing on them. Mm. I've been to that cell and I saw how small it was and he walked out of there and left it behind. That's what we have to do. Honor the ancestors. Yes. Life is not a rehearsal. Hey y'all, listen, one segment is not enough for Jennifer Lewis. So we have more with the mother of black Hollywood when we come back from this quick commercial break. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Cocktails with the Queens. Now, if you're just joining us, we have more with Jennifer Lewis in her amazing career and life. I want to say to you that I know that you've been around for a long time. And even when I got into the business and I would see you pop up, it wasn't until I actually had an uh, opportunity to be around you. You are so captivating and yeah. you are so in control. And this confident level that you have everybody needs to see that and they don't understand the confidence in which we have to exude because just like you said it ain't necessarily for them it is for us to command that and to That's have right. that and when you speak so strongly because you always have women and queens like me and this younger generation needs a person like you to keep doing what you're doing to be as real as you are and hear what i know about you you always will. So my question is this. I know after doing eight seasons of Blackish, you said that you wanted to retire, but mm. then you had a change of heart. What was that about? Girl, I'm going to give y'all the quote. <laughs> I went from Blackish to Whitish. <laughs> go get the, uh, go get the uh, poster of the show. <laughs> they, they called me and said it was a show with Molly Shannon. Girl, they, I told him, I said, you had me at hello. I know that's that. one of the funniest women in the world. That's the one that used to slam herself into chairs with Whitney Houston on Saturday Night Live. The yeah. one that used to smell her, her armpits and shit. This bitch is crazy. I wanted to work <laughs> with her. And let me tell you, Vanessa Bayer is one. I don't think I've ever loved anyone so instantly as Vanessa. Cutest thing in the world. Can y'all see it? Yes. yes. Well, another show already? 
Girl, go to Showtime. I'm having sex in the show, Vivica. I knew you put your leg up was ha- that how was gonna help you in other positions. <laughs> no, I didn't do that leg up position. I didn't want to scare them, the actors who would be able to say, "What was your first role?" Oh, I had sex with Jennifer Lewis. I think it's fabulous. <laughs> oh, honey, I am having sex. I play an ice queen, Patricia Cochran. Oh, oh, honey, she will be it. Oh, no, honey, she she is the uh, CEO and founder of a shopping network. And baby, she is in control. Y'all got to watch it. There are eight seasons already on Showtime. And we are waiting to see if we're picked up. But I'm having the time of my life. And that's why I will tell you, I'm doing my best work in this uh, series. Wow. Wow, wow, and wow. Wow, for real. I, you, I just need a class. I just need a class. So wherever you speak at, man. You know, please let us know because I'd be taking a little bit from you anyway. And I'd be, you know, they'd be talking about me too. Lisa Ray said what? And I'd be like, what would Jennifer do? <laughs> <laughs> Listen, guys, let me tell you where you can show up. I'm about to go on a six city book signing tour for okay. the book. Uh, St. Louis, of course, which is my hometown. And um, wow, I'm so excited because for the first book, uh, I had to do a lot of little things. But baby, when you get to star in the Hollywood walk of that, yeah, you don't have to put up with none of that no more. Of course, I just broke it, but that's all right. I'll send me another one. Now, When's your book coming out, Jennifer? Oh, it's coming out August 30th, but I want everybody to go and pre-order because okay. if y'all don't buy this book, I'm not going to write another one. If y'all don't pay attention, I ain't going to entertain y'all no more. Okay, I don't mean okay. that, but I could. And where can <laughs> they find the book at, darling? At, they can go to Amazon, Jennifer Lewis, Harper Collins, Jennifer Lewis. Any, just Google Jennifer Lewis. It comes right up. <laughs> and go and... Um, and pre-order the book, because I do want a bestseller this time. I'm on top of the world. I want a new series. I want to start in the Hollywood Walk of Fame. I want to travel around the world and be fabulous. You understand, guys, I am living far from perfect. I'm as scared as anybody else of the that's going on in this country. Ooh, Lord have mercy. But I am unafraid. Mm. I will not be moved. Do you understand me? I am going to, they didn't do anything but make, but cause women now to unite more than ever. Amen. They don't know the fire they put under us, baby. I've been talking to Stacey Abrams. I've been talking to Maxine Waters. I'm in it to win it. Yeah. I will. Girl, don't start me on politics. Well, you have these queens right here that is just. Don't be all right. Listen, this is what I want to be helpful. I want everybody to know these are not dark times. These are awakening times. Mm. You find courage and you find strength to get on the phone and call 20 people and make sure they're registered. If these people get in, it will be a Nazi state. Mm. Are we clear? And baby, You don't want that. All you got to do is go and watch Handmaiden's Tale. Mm. And that's what they want. That's what they want, a totalitarian uh, government here in the United States. And Mm. if we don't come out in the biggest wave, and I'm talking about waves the the size of the elk, we got to come out in a wave, baby, a blue wave right off the, the Pacific to win this one, because they're gonna try everything they can do to cheat and win. Powerful yeah. words from a yes. I believe in mankind. We're gonna be all right, but we gotta step up to the plate and move mountains because human beings are that powerful. I tell people don't go into this business unless your entire molecular structure loves it yes. because it'll It'll eat you alive, the rejection. And spit you out. Spit you out. We must, we must rise up. When I was in India and saw that sickening poverty there and that caste system, I went over to four people who were cooking for me and told them, because you know, you run around, it's eight star hotels and everything. But I told them I was poor like them before. 
and that they had to rise up. And I looked at them with their mask on and their little chef, chef hats. And I said, one of you is Gandhi. Mm. You must rise up. See, when I travel, I go into the trenches. I do private tours. I tell my driver, take me everywhere they're not going. Mm. The other, the other uh, passengers on the, on the jet. I take these tours around the world. So, cause I only get a month off. So I stick everything in there. Cause I want to travel. I want to see the entire world before my knees get out. I know they, they they out. Understand we, with me. And I want to be able to climb Machu Picchu, not stand down there and go, oh, the Incas were up there. I don't think so. I'm going to travel while I'm healthy and can still get on a two pump camel. Okay, well, listen, Jennifer, as strong as those knees and those hips and that back appear to be, I think you'll be climbing the mountains for a very long time. We want to thank you for those powerful words. Yeah. Girl, you can't thank me until I sing this song about y'all. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, close it out. First of all, I want everybody to vote. I don't care who you are or where you work. Get your ass out and vote. This ain't the election to sit home and lurk. Get your ass out and vote. <laughs> Get your ass out and vote. Get your ass out and vote. Please vote. Vote. Y'all. <laughs> I got a song for y'all. I'm going to sing y'all a song. Claudia, Erica, Selena, Lisa Ray, <laughs> all I had to say is I had fun with y'all today. <laughs> Keep on doing what you're doing. I'm so proud of y'all. Believe it or not, I said a little prayer for all of y'all at the Taj Mahal. Hi, <laughs> I love you guys. This we was great. Yay. We love you. It's Jennifer. Yay. Oh my God, that's never happened before. Yeah. You go first. We love you. Thank you so much, Jennifer Lewis, everybody. Jennifer Lewis is nothing else. Yeah. We love you. Thank you so much, Queen. Bravo. Bravo. <laughs> love, 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 love. I encourage you to share this interview with your friends. When it replays tomorrow, please watch it again. And peep how Jennifer Sarah and Miss Jennifer Lewis serenaded us. That was amazing. I love it. We're going to take a quick commercial break on that note because I'm on a high, we all on a high right now. We'll be back with more Cocktails with the Queens right after this. We got a song, y'all. We got a song. <laughs> Welcome back to Cocktails with the Queens. Listen, y'all, that was an amazing interview. I am uh, so happy. Such, such good moments here on the show. Speaking of good, listen. I'm a greedy girl and I love me some good tasting food and I am always down to try something new. So that's why I want to talk to you about this. America's number one meal kit, HelloFresh, is here to make home cooking easy, fun, and affordable. With HelloFresh, you get fresh pre-measured ingredients and mouth-watering seasonal recipes delivered right to your door. So you can, kip, you can skip the trip to the grocery store and soak up the last of the summer sun by counting on HelloFresh to make home cooking easy, fun, and affordable. And that's why it's America's number one meal kit. The meals are ready in 30 minutes or less, which I love. Lightning prep recipes and quick breakfasts and lunches. Perfect for your busy schedule. Now that, listen, if I can't make a meal under 30 minutes, I'm not even into it. So I love that you can make these so quickly and they taste really, really good. I cannot wait to get my next shipment from HelloFresh. Now, where else can you get over 55 weekly options to choose from each week, ranging from family friendly to fit and wholesome? and even veggie. HelloFresh has tasty and nutritious meals that are sure to please everyone. Go to hellofresh.com slash CWQ16 and use code CWQ16 for 16 free meals across seven boxes and three free gifts. Once again, that's hellofresh.com slash CWQ16. Use code CWQ16 for 16 
free meals across seven boxes, and that's in three free gifts. Once again, fast, affordable, easy to make, and tastes so good. Go ahead and give them a call and check them out. We'll be right back with more Cocktails with the Queens when we return. Welcome back to Cocktails with the Queens. Ladies, y'all remember when we had to get through the COVID uh, lockdown and we had club quarantine? Y'all remember that? Yeah. yeah. I remember all the fat uh, gang, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Besides getting fat, the music was pretty good, right? The music yeah. made me dance off a couple of inches too, yeah. Well, I loved it because you know what? It saved us from depression. It was Definitely. the greatest thing. It brought us together and it was a moment of happiness in a oh. time of terror. <laughs> it definitely got us through COVID. I think the, the best thing about it was like all of the surprises that you saw of celebrity guests that came through from politicians, uh, from actors, singers, everybody was up in there jamming. It was a blast. It was super well, amazing. Quarantine was the best because I looked at how many people were in there and it made me feel like I was missing a whole night at the club. You know what okay. I mean? So I actually used it to dance to rejuvenate because music is universal and he knew it, he gave it to us and he served us. Well, D-Nice is bringing Club Quarantine live to Vegas for Labor Day weekend in partnership with Live Nation Urban. Check it out. From his living room to the stage, D-Nice is bringing Club Quarantine live to Las well, Vegas you. for a Labor Day weekend destination vibe like no other. Grab your tickets now for three days of fun. Featuring performances by Maya, Keisha Gold, Jagged Edge, Amore. Tickets on sale now at CQLiveInVegas.com. 21 and up. See you in Vegas for Club Quarantine Live with D-Nice September 2nd through the 4th. Presented in partnership with Live Nation Urban. Uh, Vegas, gambling, D nice, club quarantine. Don't threaten me. With there. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna be I'm lit, baby. baby. That's my birthday weekend when you get through. Oh, oh snap. Uh oh, oh maybe, maybe we need to do a, a, another, another trip oh. in Vegas. Selena's birthday in Vegas. Okay. I'm there. I'm there. <laughs> hey, hey, everybody. Uh, go to cqliveinvegas.com for more information. That's cqliveinvegas.com for more information. And you might see the queens out there. Okay. Thank you. All right, ladies, let's get back into it. Sherry Lee, a South Korean woman, has reportedly spent more than $60,000 to look like Kim Kardashian. Mm -hmm. uh, let's take a look at her picture. She, uh oh. She, she, they didn't do mm -hmm. it. Oh, she needs her money her, back. Well, she thank Oh, she needs a serious refund. Um, I thought she was prettier before, to be very honest with you. I, I mean, I, I don't mind just like a little bit of lip, you know, maybe like, you know, if she wanted to get a little sex appeal, a little out, because, you know, you know, the little K-pop thing and all of that's popping. So why would you go away from what's sexy happening in your nationality to look like that well according to the new york post she had 15 surgeries to achieve her desired look now lee told the southwest news service that kim has always been an inspiration and she's the most beautiful woman in the world um the question <gasps> is do you think the surgeons nailed her look i think vivica to piggyback off you she was prettier before selena what you think she, oh you kind of got Cher's nose a little bit I can yes see she, she looks like a bad blow-up doll um, you know, Kim is Armenian, <coughs> but she's giving white woman. <laughs> you went from Asian to a white woman. That's it's like you have white woman features, and then the the breasts they're just not indicative of what she looks like. I'm just I, listen. It's all the food to me. First of all, to try and get out and go through all these his surgeries to look like a whole other person. Is food. It is the food to me, so I have nothing. I'm in my, in my Whitney Houston voice. I have nothing. <laughs> my Jennifer Lewis spirit, okay? I have nothing for the people on that. Be you, darlings. Learn to embrace you. You know, what's the sense of looking like someone else? Losing your identity. I, I don't get it. I mean, if she wanted to do that, she should have called Kylie's surgeon. Okay. Listen, Lisa. What? Dude, I want to call no, no. Kylie surgeon. No, no. What point. I'm saying is that girl, whatever pictures that she took to them and yes. said, I want to look like this here, they did an excellent job. Yes. She is beautiful. 
Hands down. Yes, no, she but real rich. talk, she wanted to look like Kim, you know, closer to Kim. But see, then too, Kylie, that's her sister. So the base is already Yeah. yeah. Like, I don't yeah. know about that. Yeah, no. Nah. You nah, ended up looking more like those couple of episodes of the Kardashians. They uh uh-uh, Lisa like, Ray. You saw the difference now. There was, you know, there they that same blood, you know, but you saw the difference, and hence that's why she went and said, Hey, I want to look like this. But it worked for her and it's working for her. And they need to show up a billion dollars. Yeah, a lot of people could come up, you know what I mean? But I guess they want to keep their secret to themselves because they don't want a whole bunch of them running around because people you see will go, I want to look like Kim Kardashian. She's Uh, like, I want to look like me. I want to be the only one. I don't want a bunch of, you know, clones around. I know the doctor. I'll give you all the, I'll, put, I'll put the name. I'll put the doctor's name in the chat. I know the doctor. But uh, that lady, <laughs> Claudia, that lady, that lady. Did she take a picture of Kim with her, or did she take a picture of of, of Bruce or or, or Caitlyn? Because <laughs> he made her. He took away her beauty that she had. Exactly. She looks <laughs> like a foe. Uh, y'all already got my opinion. Anyway. Okay. Well, ladies, before we go, let me not get in any more trouble. I want to celebrate Jennifer Lewis's star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame by yeah. playing a game of fame or shame. Okay. Yeah. That's giving like old school co- cartoons. Remember like Mighty Mouse? Da, 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 da. <laughs> okay, I'll show you photos of celebrities and you ladies will tell me if you'd put them on the Walk of Fame or the Walk of Shame. Are you ready to play Fame or Shame? Yes. Let's do it. All right, first up, Tracy Ellis Ross, Fame or Shame? Fame. fame. I like her. I want to live forever. Fabulous yeah. woman. Amazing woman. Yes. She's super cute. Okay, next up we have the Kardashians. Fame or shame? Say fame. 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 A, fa- a shameless fame. <laughs> a shameful fame. Excellent, Selena. <laughs> okay, next we have R. Kelly. Fame mm. or shame? Protein fame um, that protein. turned into a shame. Fame. shame. Kind of, yeah. Too bad. Still love your music, bro. Absolutely. Shame. Dun, 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 dun. It's a shame. I believe I can mm. lie. Lie. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Next we have yay. Fame or shame? Fame. <laughs> a shameful fame. Yeah. 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 Fame. If the Kardashians get the fame, he, he gets, gets, the fame. It too. He gets it too. That was a really reluctant. How about this? Career wise, innovativeness, his creativity, fame all day long. Yeah. Hugging yeah. Donald Trump and saying that slavery was a choice. Shame. A but damn shame, co- as a matter of fact. Career mm-hmm. murdered it. Okay, next up, Donald Trump. Fame. Shame. Shame. You's about to lose your job. You's about to lose your job. Get this drift. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely a shame. And, and starting with toupee. <sighs> oh, wait. He tried to come out with a toupee <laughs> last week that was dead on arrival. They was killing That toupee is hot for the streets, honey. I like that. <laughs> uh, last one, Tristan Thompson. Fame. Shame. 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 Damn, I didn't even get to finish the sentence. Y'all was like, shame. It was like, Tristan, talk shame. <laughs> yeah. And it's sad, too, because he's, look at him. He's a handsome. He's handsome, um, yeah. Yeah, he's, he's good looking. But, you know, I think the one thing that everybody really has to watch out is just the choices you make. You know, choices you make stick with you. Trust and believe. We all know. So, and, but you know, this thing, even when you make bad choices, you absolutely can turn it around if you learn from him. But he kept making the same choice right. over and over so again. Like, oh, it's that it's for me. Do better. better. Do better. Yeah, Tristan. Do better. Okay, uh, ladies, as mentioned, we um, Labor Day weekend is all about club quarantine with D-Nice and performances by Keisha Cole, Jagged Edge, Tank, Elder Barge, Maya, and more. Scan the QR code to get your tickets. That is going to be super lit. And the Queens might actually be in the building celebrating Selena Johnson's birthday. We haven't committed to it yet, but we gonna might, we, we, we might have to work on this. Yeah, I was looking for somewhere to get away to. I will dance, my, I will dance the night away. It doesn't I mean, matter. Right you know, 
He was at the Carnegie Hall just recently doing this same club quarantine, and my bass player played for him. He said it was unbelievable. Carnegie Hall. Carnegie Hall. Yes. And any Vegas promoters that are really smart and want to make some dollars, you can have the Queens host your club that night. For Come on, Claudia. And we'll have our, you know what I'm saying? It's all taken care of. You can get all four of us to be in Vegas. I'm just saying, who want to do it? Who want to jump? Yeah. <laughs> I'm trying to get us a It's so fun, doesn't it? It does. Yeah. It really does. Because like Vegas is like the one place that you go to and you're like, Whatever happens in Vegas stays in Vegas. It's I like no judgment. I want something to happen in Vegas. And I want it to happen. Be nice. Okay. <laughs> nice. Lisa Ray, you got to make stuff happen. <laughs> Lisa Ray, it's, it's, you can get in trouble in Vegas, boy. I, I don't, I one time I got gone. married, one time I got married, and one time I ended up at a pawn shop trying to sell my <laughs> necklace and get more money to go back to the table. But that's a whole nother story. I want to thank my queen <laughs> and also Jennifer Lewis for an amazing interview. Thank you for joining yeah. us, queen. We appreciate you so much. Thank you for watching us on YouTube. Y'all going to stick around for the polls that's coming up next. Ladies, I had a fun time with y'all tonight. As always, that's how we do it. Every Monday, we do our best to set it off, right? Okay, mm. come on, set it off. Yeah, come on, baby. That's the movie. Bye, soulmates. Bye.